Steph Skardolf. I'm a quilter, designer, and educator. Today, I'm gonna to tell you about color play. So when I first started quilting, I didn't use a lot of different colors. I love working with the cool colors in the blue and green side of the color wheel. One thing I recently realized is I tend to steer clear of the browns, reds, and purples in quilting design. So I challenged myself to start working with these colors more. But sometimes I don't wanna buy fabric in the first place. I wanna come up with a way to experiment and play with it. So here I've come up with a fun, uh, resource budget friendly way to play with color. And it's also kid friendly, although I do not recommend using a rotary cutter around your kids. I went to my local art store and I picked up these four pieces of paper here, and you can find construction paper to work with, you can find art paper, this is actually specific for painting and pastels. So to start, I'm going to cut three inch strips from about four stacks of paper. So I'm going to cut the paper, and this is a lot like cutting fabric. You wanna line up your, rotary cut, your ruler here nicely and use your rotary cutter. Once I've cut a bunch of strips, I can turn them and cut three inch squares. And right now I'm using the lines on my ruler to cut this, but you can also use the lines on your mat if you'd like. After you've got a big stack of squares cut, you can go ahead and cut each of those at a 45 degree angle. And you can again stack those and cut many half square triangles out. So, once you've collected a lot of your half square triangles, you can get to color play. So I have cut all these different wonderful colors and let's talk about how I might play with them. So one of the things that I mentioned was that I don't necessarily work with brown usually. So I'm gonna see if I can find a color that I would like to play with brown. If I grab this red, that works, that might work for some people, but that's not a pairing that I gravitate towards. But I do like combining this brown with a bit of aqua or blue. That kind of offsets some of that deeper reddish brownish tone there. So that might be a combination that I would work with. Again, I might wanna work with a low proportion of brown to bring into a quilt, but higher amounts of blue and brightness in that blue side of the color wheel. Let's pull another color set that may or may not work. So reds are a color that I'm not gra I don't gravitate towards. Here are two reds. I probably wouldn't pair these two because they don't have enough contrast be between them. This is kind of a higher contrast red and this is a more of a dusty red but if I want my piecing to pop, I might not pair these two together. Now white and black can go with a lot of different things. I might combine the black with this bright yellow. I like that combination a lot. And also add in an aqua and a blue. That looks familiar to what I'm wearing right now. <laughs> Let's see, another set of colors that I don't usually work with is orange. If I try pairing a brighter orange with a white, that looks pretty fun. There's a high saturation orange with that white and that's a really nice pop. So that might be something I would use in a quilt to make my geometric shapes pop. 
Also, if you're thinking about color theory, I might pair orange with a nice blue. So I like this orange and blue together. This range looks pretty nice. So if you want to make finished pieces, you can glue these to a different background. And in your background color, you can add in even another layer of color. You could add a fuchsia, like this one here. So that would be a nice set of four colors with a fuchsia background. You can also add white or black to a background to add negative space to a piece. So there's just some examples of colors that I might combine. And I've got some finished pieces here to show you. So in this first block, I try to combine colors that I don't gravitate towards, which is the brown and the pink, this darker fuchsia color. And I added in this bright blue color. And I really like that balance there. The amount of brown is that's something that I wouldn't normally go for. It looks nice against the fuchsia and the bright blue color. And this is referred to as a spinning or turned star. In this block, I paired a dusty green, which is a color I don't think people gravitate towards, with a darker blue background, this bright fuchsia, and this bright yellow. So I, I think these all work together because there's a lot of contrast between the colors. The green and the pink go nicely together. Those are opposite each other on the color wheel, but the pink is a very high saturation, and this green is a little bit lighter. In this Ohio star block, I also used brown again and red, and I offset it with some white, blue, and this neon yellow. And finally, in this Northunderland star, I used, or it's also referred to as an eight point star in some occasions, I again used this dusty green background with two shades of a fuchsia, this middle one is a darker maroon color, which is, has a nice pop against this saturated pink, and then adding in this blue. I really like this combination together. All right, let's go scrappy. So I'm gonna go back to my half square triangles here and just work on combining some colors that are things that you might not normally combine. In each of these, Combine half square triangles, I'm going for a high contrast between the blocks. I'm gonna put an orange next to this blue here. Go for a fuchsia to go with this orange. This is mixing, missing some black and dark here, so let's add that in. Now I think it's missing some blue. Uh, let's go with a lighter blue here. All right, so I'm going to go with those scrappy colors. And from there, I might actually go ahead and sew these together or finish the piece and experiment with different background colors to unify them. With that, I hope you get out your tools and are encouraged to play with color.